Yay Networks. Welcome back to Junkyard Mayhem. Welcome back. At this precise moment in time, the physical makeup of my body is about 75% four cheese rice Oh my God. Shane discovered, rediscovered rice aroni. Rediscovered. Redis- it's a childhood favorite, I guess. You might call it a blast from the past. Uh huh. I used to thrive. I used to live <laughs> off of rice aroni as uh-huh. a an up and coming, you know, high school and college student. Okay. It was my one of my favorite meals, mm-hmm. along with tater tots. Oh my god. Potato smiles. No, that's mine. Don't take that from me. Well, they were mine too. Stiffer's French bread pizza. Oh my god, you recently rediscovered that too. Are you, going, are you doing like a midlife crisis or something? I don't know. Maybe I'm redressing. Yeah. But very recently, we were meandering through the grocery store, mm-hmm. and I spotted microwavable cups. Of Ricerone. This was in LA. In both Fort Cheese okay. and Cheesy Broccoli flavor. Broccoli cheddar. Okay, we can fast forward a little bit. Shane loved them. And then when we came home, we went to three different grocery stores looking for Ricerone in microwavable cups. And each one of them must have known that <laughs> I was coming because they hid them, <laughs> they removed them from their shelves. I don't know if it's a shortage or they just don't stock that. Maybe it's a hotter item, well, a hot commodity out west. It, where Or here. Maybe it's more of a hot commodity here and it keeps selling out from under you. But also, <laughs> be, I feel like the Midwest is where yeah. right, cheesy rice aroni. I don't think people in LA better. are living off of microwavable cups of rice aroni like you are. Anyway, I didn't intend to spend this long discussing it, but... Tell them what you did. I'm sorry, what did I do? Tell them how you oh, coped with not oh, finding oh, it. Right, I have to resolve the, yeah. the plate. Uh, I ordered 30 of them on Amazon. Oh, and they <laughs> arrived, and so now we have a stockpile, like doomsday preppers. Uh-huh. And I imagine they last forever, so that's good. But I've been eating at least one or two a day, oh so they're not on the last that long. Shame. They're amazing. You You're going to get them, sick of it. You might get them, they turn into cheesy sludge, uh-huh. and it collapses down my throat. Oh, my God. Like, barely have to chew. Okay. Mm. Yum. Rice, can, noodles, oh. and cheese. Can we move on to something more interesting for everybody? Yes. What are we talking about today? What is this episode about? Oh, well, I have a deep dive for you. A deep dive? A dumpster dive. A dumpster dive. <laughs> I, it's been so long that I forgot that that's what it's called. Every few, well, every episode, I see a few comments that say, bring back the dumpster dive. Aww. They really like your dumpster dive. That's nice. This one is very specific to you. It's about <laughs> SMA treatments. This is a big one. This is, I know, and it, it took me a long time, and I was typing away. And I haven't told you anything. I found some really interesting stuff that I don't think you know. Is it about all of the treatments or like is it about a specific Um, SMA treatment? It's about uh, kind of like two specific SMA treatments. And they're new. Uh, One is new. The other one is the one that you haven't had. Oh. It's just a little tidbit about that one. But yeah, it's mostly about one new one that's like totally different than the other ones. And then just like a little something I found about about the last one. Yeah, the reason we're doing this is because we kind of discovered that there is another big SMA treatment under, on the horizon. Yeah, and, and we knew about that like years ago, but these things take so long that you kind of forget. Yeah. And then you're, and then it's like study has been completed and you're like, oh, wow, here it is. And Hannah began looking into it more and more and we were like, you know what? Let's just mm-hmm. make this a dumpster dive. Yep. So we're going to do that. That's going to be exciting because I know nothing about it. Yeah. I'm interested to hear if it's like, gonna maybe even be viable for me yeah um and then we're gonna play would you rather uh-huh. at the end i've found some amazing ones and i've invented a few on oh, my own of course you did those are always fun <laughs> uh but to begin we have a little update about our 
golden unicorn <laughs> caregiver situation. When we actually have one and they're referred to as the golden unicorn, that's going to be funny. That's their title. And for, like we have, so we, we talked about that in our episode and uh, we received like maybe 10. It was like around 12. 10 or 12. Like, yeah. Uh, emails from people being like, I might be your golden unicorn. And most of them did begin with yep. that exact phrase. <laughs> and, like Almost every subject line from them was like, Am I yeah. your golden <laughs> unit? But awesome. these people seem incredible. They yeah. tick many of the boxes that we put out there in our video, and they all seemed very eager and interested to learn more and get to know us. So we are actively communicating with all of them and scheduling out you know, interviews to get to know them all. Yeah, I feel so good. Like, I know. I can't believe it. I know that I was more optimistic than you that we would find people yeah but kind of in my my vision for what that looked like was we might find one or two yeah and like hopefully one would work out mm -hmm. now we have 12 and be like i know i've barely even put out yeah a real that's just the people <laughs> that wanted to listen to a 45 minute video <laughs> You know, and then we got all those emails like the first day. Uh -huh. So thank you to all, you know, all of you who actually listen to and watch our videos. I can't believe you guys do that. That's so nice. I also very much appreciate all of the comments from people that have disabilities, mm -hmm. who have hired caregivers, who have commented and emailed advice or their thoughts, things like that. Yep. Really appreciate that. Um, so we're in a good spot. Yeah. We've been talking about this a lot with our family and our Hannah's parents who we live with, my mom and dad. Um, it's just like, yeah, it's real. It's happening. It's happening. We're moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the end of our caregiver update. We will keep you up to date as that progresses. Yeah. But let's take a quick break, mm -hmm. and then we will be back to learn about the brand new SMA treatment. Yes, we will. Oh. Dumpster dive me. Okay. All right, we're back. I'm ready for my dumpster dive. Hit me with the info. I hope I can get through this because I still have a lingering cough from my oh, mystery geez. illness. Yeah, that's what the podcast listener <laughs> wants to hear from their host. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. There might be some odd cuts in here while I <laughs> cough. Okay. So today, Shane, we're going to begin by talking about muscle cells. Can you refer to me as your student? No. <laughs> now, I don't expect you to know a lot about muscle cells, given your situation. My laugh there but, was. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you a bit about them. So there's a new treatment, like we said, coming up the pipeline of SMA treatments. Coming down the pipeline. It's you coming say up. up the pipeline? Yeah, coming up the pipeline. Down the pipeline. I like to say up. I'm optimistic. It flows against... Yeah, Gravity. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of barricades on the way to being FDA approved. So I would say flowing up, upstream. <laughs> That's wow. You Fighting thought... its way up river. Would you prefer that? Wow. <laughs> you, that actually is a metaphor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it's down the pipeline. I don't know. I feel like up the pipeline sounds better. Coming through the pipeline. Coming through. Uh, and it's completely different than the other SMA treatments that are out there. And especially the two that Shane has received. So yes. that's why we're going to talk about that today. Yeah. And this is so weird that like... You know, my entire life, we talked about, you know, treatments for SMA as this, like, very far away, mm -hmm. distant future, almost like science fiction. Yeah. You know, like, the idea that they would be able to give me, like, fake DNA. I know. That would make my muscles not decay. Well, we're going to talk about that today, Shane. I'm just saying, like, my whole life, it's been not really a reality. Yeah. And then in the last, what, five, six years, mm -hmm. there's now multiple. I know. Which four. Is wild. We're going to talk about four of them today. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to first talk about what SMA is, like what, you know, what is happening. Uh, I feel like I'm at the doctor. I know. So we can talk about uh, what these treatments actually do. God, my doctor's so beautiful. <laughs> I wonder if she likes me. Oh, my God. This is going to be very brief, obviously. So basically, 
in people with SMA, the SMN1 gene doesn't work. And I learned something new today. Like I'm about to, I hope, blow your mind okay. because it blew my mind, Shane. <laughs> okay. This is so interesting. I'm ready. So the SMN1 gene doesn't work. And the SMN1 gene is what produces survival motor neuron protein, which is SMN. Okay. And that does a ton of different things. Like it does a lot. Oh, great. Which is bad news for you. <laughs> but, you know, one of the main things that it does is keep your motor neurons alive, which is why it's called survival survival motor neuron protein, obviously. Uh, what else does it do? Are you going to tell me uh, about No, that? I'm not going to tell you about uh, the rest because it was it was like gibberish to me. Oh, okay. And it was like it does this and this and, and scientists aren't sure everything that it does, but it does this. And I was like, you know what? Well, I'm going to go by the name. Okay. And, it's you know, mostly about the survival motor neuron. Well, yeah, it might be, but there's some other stuff. <laughs> Is that why I have the weird toe? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it, that helps keep your motor neurons alive. And in people with SMA, <clears throat> they have a backup SMN gene, which is called SMN2. So if your SMN1 doesn't work, you have to rely on your SMN2. So now, this is what blew so, my mind. Oh, okay, what? Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go I have ahead. a question. Yeah. I, everyone has an SMN2 backup, correct? That's what blew my mind. No. 10 to 15% of. If, People yeah. without SMA have no SMN2. It's not something that everybody has. What? Everybody with SMA has it. Really? Uh-huh. So the body is like, oh, we don't have this SMN1 thing. We yeah. got to make our backup. And there was something interesting that I read, and I didn't even I didn't even put it in here, but it was like people in families with SMA, you know, like your brother per se, but like who doesn't have SMA, uh-huh. they found that like, some of those people had five SMN2 copies, Whoa. which is like not like most people have zero to three that don't have SMA. Like I might have zero. I might have three, like it, uh-huh. it, 10 to 15% of people have none. Um, but people in families with SMA have more, co- can have more copies, which is like, it might, that means that SMA can like change people's phenotypes. It said it was just like this really interesting complicated thing of like even if you don't have it you might have yeah more smn2 because like in your you know in your genes your yeah. body's like someone might have this it's really complicated well i've lived my whole life thinking that everyone yeah. had smn1 and the backup smn2 yep and 10 to 15 percent of people without sma have none have no smn2 yeah and are they is there any physical Mm-mm. manifestation? Because we don't use it. Like, that? even if I had it, I don't, like, oh. I'm just, I'm good with my SMN1. Interesting. You're more than good. Yeah. You're just like. I'm growing. You're growing. <laughs> Exponentially. You're, your muscles my are. Muscles. We're going to talk about that, actually. Exponential muscle growth. Oh, uh, yeah? Okay. Well, not that exactly. But Is that something that. I might be able to share? <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal, Shane. That's the new treatment. It is. That's actually what it is oh about. My God. Okay. Okay. It's not. It's not it. exponential, but it is about muscle growth and and muscle. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so everyone it with SMA matter. does. My life <laughs> depends on it. <laughs> everyone with SMA has at least one copy of SMN two, and the more copies of it you have, studies have shown that the less severe your disease expression tends to be. So okay. the more copies you have the more SMN protein you're making, even though the SMN2 gene doesn't do as good of a job as yeah. SMN1. Well, that makes sense. I mean, the more you have, the yeah. more it can make. So it's like pumping out 2% of what you need, okay. you know, but it's it's doing that. And I made that up. That's not scientific. 2% is not scientific. <laughs> uh, anyway, back to the treatments. We have Spinraza and Avrizd, which both do the same thing, basically. Okay. They go in and they help the SMN2 gene in your body produce more SMN. It says, wake up, idiot. This is all we've got. you got to make more. Yeah, it's like, come on. Let's, let's give a little bit extra. As you can see, SMN1 never showed up. SMN1. So you're going to yeah. need to step up. Yep. SMN2. Exactly. I'm looking at you. Uh huh. Spinraza and Rizaplam are like like bullies almost. Yeah, they're like, hey, they're get like, to work. Yeah, they're, they're like a tough boss. Bosses, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we have Zolgensma. Just try to understand it in my own terms. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Zolgensma, which is a gene therapy. Okay. And that replaces the function of the non working SMN1 gene with a new working SMN gene. So it just goes in there with a whole new one. And it's like, you know what? Use this instead. Wow. We've got you. It gives you an SMN1. Uh, yeah, I guess like so. Like a fate one? Uh, probably. Yeah, they're calling it like, this is from their website because I didn't want to mess it up. And it just says that it replaces the function of non-working SMN1 gene with a new working SMN gene. 
So I, was like, yeah, I think, but like that works enough. the same as an SMN one. Okay. I, I don't think they're calling it that because it's not like truly that. They yeah, like made it. Okay. Yes. This is getting over my head. I know. <laughs> and we're going to come back to that later to the Zoljan Smith stuff because there's something really interesting about it. But for and, now, we'll just talk about the new treatment. And I did not receive Zoljan Smith. That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back to that. Zoljan Smith right now is for kids two and under. And I was, while I was researching this, I was like, why? That's irritating to me. And so then I researched it and I'm going to yeah. tell you about it. it. Just as a, you know, a little context, we've seen so many stories of people with SMA receiving Zolgensma, mm-hmm. you know, kids under two. Yeah. And they basically don't have mm-hmm. SMA symptoms. Yeah. A like, lot. I mean, like, a lot of them will be on a VRSD after uh-huh. that. But like, yeah, the, the kids hit their milestones yeah. and it seems like. So it feels like one of those things that I'm like. If I could just do that, I know. and it's a once and done treatment. Yeah, if which I could is just nice. do that, I'd have an SMN one, then I'd be, you know, smooth sailing. And I will say that Novartis, who who is the company behind Zolgensma, has said that they're they want everyone with SMA, regardless of like age and ventilation status and strength, to be able to get yeah. the gene therapy. It's so. Just complicated to get to FDA approval for that. Exactly, but we're going to talk about that because okay, I so was that's like, later. where is that? Okay, so now. There's a totally different kind of treatment in the works. Oh, boy. It is from the pharmaceutical company Scholar Rock. This is like big news. I know. I don't want to under or yeah. undersell. It's really this is cool. Big news. Uh, it is called a pitagromab. A pitagromab? Okay, Why did they need the name them? <laughs> so just call it like boopy. muscle juice <laughs> or boopy. Yeah. <laughs> Something easy to say. A pitagromat. I don't even know which syllable. A pitagro. When there's five syllables, which one do you even enunciate? Do these marketers or whoever's name in this know that the people taking it have very low muscle tone in their <laughs> jaws and tongues? We can't get through a five syllable word. Well, I'm going to call it easily. a pitagromab, and it's probably not said that way. It sounds inappropriate. I know. It is a selective inhibitor of the activation of latent myostatin. So I figure, you know, that's enough of that. Okay, move on. Now we're going to move on to the other (laughs) treatment. I'm just kidding. Okay. So we have three kinds of muscle cells. I'm going to describe exactly what they mean by selective inhibitor of blah, 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 blah. We have three kinds of muscle cells. Not for me. For all the dumb, <laughs> for all the dummies out there. You already that know. Don't know what that means. You I already, know. Of I, course. I'm fine. What, can you just t- explain to me what but that is? It's so that, you know, the mitochondria and it said of plasties. <laughs> okay. We've I'm functioning only on rice and rice right now. <laughs> so my like brain cells are not firing on all cylinders. All right. Well, we have three <laughs> kinds of muscle cells or myocytes. Okay. Uh, cardiac muscle cells make up the middle muscular layer of the heart. Smooth muscle cells are behind involuntary movement, like your intestines pumping uh-huh. food through. And then skeletal muscle cells make up the muscle tissues connected to the skeleton, and that's what we use for voluntary movement. Got it. So that's what SMA affects because they affect the motor neurons, and then that's what you use to you know, activate those skeletal the muscles. Skeletal muscles. Your other muscles are just functioning on their own. They yeah. don't need this. Yes. And so that is why I look like a skeleton. <laughs> because the muscles that normally hide my skeleton uh-huh. They're are not there. all but evaporated. Yeah, but your your intestines are pumping beautifully. My intestines work so well. Okay. <sighs> so our skeletal muscles naturally secrete myostatin a protein that keeps them from growing too large. <laughs> so I make that, you know, everybody makes that so that you don't just like Balloon. keep going. You know, they're like, hey, let's let's <laughs> relax. So in animals, treatment with myostatin inhibitors has been associated with a significant increase in muscle mass. Oh, geez. So they stop you from producing myostatin. They, you know, they deactivate the myostatin and your muscles can just grow more oh because they are not inhibited I by I know this. that animal studies are not always a fun thing to talk about, but right now yeah. I'm imagining a duck <laughs> that is just 90 pounds of pure muscle, uh-huh. and it's scaring me and turning me on <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so therefore myostatin inhibition is interesting to scientists for conditions like SMA and ALS. Right. Because if you didn't have myostatin, you know, keeping your muscles small, how how big could you grow is the question. I wonder. I wonder too. <laughs> so Scholar Rock says about a pitagromab, 
This is a quote. Rather than the traditional approach of blocking already activated mature myostatin or the receptor, epidogromab selectively targets the precursor or inactive form of myostatin to block its activation in the muscle. So they're like, we're doing an even better job than anybody else. <laughs> we are starting at the source. They're getting right down to the bare, <laughs> the bare knuckles of it you all. You won't even have a nub of myostatin. <laughs> You will dream of the days mm -hmm. when you used to have some myostatin <laughs> because you now are <laughs> unable to fit through doorways <laughs> because your muscles are so big. Okay. Popeye. Uh-huh. They should have called it the Popeye. I know. The Popeye pill. They should have. Maybe they oh, will. Maybe that will hey, be the generic. You heard it here. You may not use that without proper intellectual rights oh compensation. Okay, so they first did the Topaz trial, that's what they called it, uh, where 58 children and young adults ages 2 to 21 with SMA types 2 or 3 received epidogromab as an into-the-vein infusion, so like an IV, oh. uh, every four weeks for a year. Uh, most of them were also getting Spinraza, and they had to have been on Spinraza for at least 10 months before beginning the trial so that they were more stable, you know. Okay. They either got a low or a high dose of the medicine, and the top-line data of that study showed that motor function was stable after a year of treatment for most patients, and some experienced motor improvements, which were particularly notable among younger patients or the ones at the, no, among younger patients and the ones at the higher dose versus the lower dose. And I just want to explain that, like, in the natural course of the disease, Yeah improved muscle function is not a not thing. Not a thing, yeah. And holding stable is also not a thing. Yeah. It's decline. Yeah. So just the, you know, maintaining a base level of muscle is remarkable in that sense. Yeah. So the 16 non-ambulatory patients between ages 2 and 12 who received the higher dose, this group that was particularly notable, had an average increase of 4.4 points on the Hammersmith Functional Motor Scale expanded version. Wow. <laughs> Rich, I've taken that test. Yes. I take it once a year, and I will say that four points is not a laughing matter. Oh, yeah. Like, if I moved up four points, Henry would be like, slow down, buddy. Yeah, you'd be you're, doing some new skills. You're getting too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and all of the trial participants that finished the year, which was all but one, so 57 people went through the whole trial, all of them decided to remain on the treatment after the one year ended. So that's good. They didn't hate it. So it's a once a month IV, IV. infusion? Yeah. Not liking that. Yep. Can we look for a way around that? I didn't think you'd Spoiler like that. <laughs> Because I'm a hard stick. I know. <laughs> it's like all these treatments. Why? Why can't you just make it a little bit less awful? And I will say, like, the the treatment seems cool, but these people are already, most of them, at least, were already on Spinraza, mm -hmm. which the point of that is to slow or stop decline. So I'm like, is it super notable that, you know, all of the people didn't decline? I see, yeah. You know, like, it wasn't like they grew muscle exponentially right right you know it was it was like small improvements are just staying the same which uh -huh. is you know kind of what you're getting with a RISD already right yeah i guess it's hard to separate you know if that's the effect of spin raza keeping them stable mm -hmm. or you know how much of an effect this new treatment does or does not have exactly so so it's not a crazy effect like it's not a huge so you're not te you're telling me i'm not going to swell to the size of a hot air balloon with my triceps and no, biceps. You will not. You might improve uh, on the Hammersmith test, though. Four points. Yeah. I'm picking up ten marbles instead <laughs> of only seven. <laughs> instead of one. <laughs> um, I just I, I think it's funny that, like, I'm already, I mean, this could, you know, improve my strength. Yeah. It could. And I'm already like, oh, but injections. I know. IV? Once a month. Like, Is that worth it? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I feel like they, they make up the most annoying way <laughs> to administer these things. I know. They're like, we have this treatment that's going to make you be able to walk again. Oh, my God. But we have to stab your eyes <laughs> with a knife every other day. <laughs> You're like, never mind. And the only facility... But certified to perform it is in Tampa. Oh. So you have to go to Tampa once a month. 
I thought it was every other day. Every other day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, now Scholar Rock is doing a phase three trial called Sapphire because they finished Topaz. I love the trial names. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, and now they're testing two doses of Epidogromab against a placebo. So now they're like, let's, and all these people uh, in this, in the trial, it's going to be 204 people with SMA types two or three, okay. and they're all on either Spinraza or a VRSD. Okay. So it'll be like, you're on a VRSD and you're getting a placebo or you're on a VRSD and you're getting a pitagrobab. And that is actively occurring that, that trial phase. I believe, yes, I think they're doing that now. Cool. So while I was researching all of this, I found an article on SMA News Today, which was one of my ma- pretty much my main source for all this, besides the actual like okay, niche website, all of the um, pharmaceutical company websites, and then SMA News Today were pretty much what I used so for you're this. You're basically giving us propaganda. <laughs> this is the SMA propaganda machine yeah. working its hardest. It's biased. <laughs> it cares about these studies. <laughs> Okay, so um, I found an article talking about the possibility of using Zolgensma, that gene therapy, in adults. Now, I was under the impression that it couldn't be used in adults, and I think you were also, because this is our like joint idea that we had in our heads, <laughs> that you couldn't use it because of something about weight and like the liver f- issue. I thought it had to do with the liver. Yeah, yep. because in Zolgensma, one of the main side effects that's very serious is liver failure mm-hmm. that can cause death. So like... This medicine, they have to do a lot to prep the liver. It's like a whole thing. And we just thought, we had heard, I don't know from who, like this was just kind of a thought. I think it was at a conference or something. I know. We heard that like the higher dose that would be needed for adults, for adults would affect the liver too negatively. But I don't think you need a higher dose in gene. It's like, anyway, I'm going to talk about it. I haven't seen anything about that. Like not once did they mention that okay. in all of this. So yeah. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> Like, that doesn't seem to be their concern with adults. Okay. In fact, it isn't, because I'm about to talk about it. Go for it. So I was under the impression that it couldn't be used because of the liver stuff. Don't know how we got that idea. We're just going to move on from <laughs> that. Weight is apparently not the issue, okay. which kind of makes sense, because otherwise it would be a weight-specific thing right. instead of an age-specific age, yeah. thing. It's two years is the cutoff. So if a kid is you know, 26 months old, they're not allowed, and they might weigh less than a kid that's 24 months. So I guess it's not spe- specifically weight. Basically, Zolgensma uses a modified virus to get in the body and deliver its gene-modifying magical stuff. And that's as well as I understand it. The scientists that invented this are like, yeah. oh, it's not magic. <laughs> <laughs> I spent 10 years of my yeah. life. <laughs> They're like, no, no, that's not quite it. But basically, it, it uses a virus that is modified to not multiply in the body. It's just like a you know defunct virus. And it's an adeno-associated virus, serotype 9, or AAV9. AAV9 and other AAV viruses are naturally out there in the world, and we come across them in our daily life. I saw one the other day. (laughs) (laughs) So researchers thought that adults or, you know, kids over two had probably built up antibodies to the virus Mm. because they have come across it, and those antibodies would bind to the treatment, attack it, and make it less ineffective or ineffective, you know, entirely. That makes sense. Which is a thing with AAV viruses. Like they know that we build up antibodies to them. So it's just like, it's just known that that's a thing. Yeah. So that's why they use the, you know, the two-year-olds cut off. They were like kids under this probably haven't built up the antibodies and it should be fine. What if it's a kid that's like well-traveled? I know. I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing. You can test if someone has the antibodies. Uh-huh. So I would love to know why that wasn't just part of that's the... That's just what the determining factor is people with we'll just test you less and yeah i don't know why uh-huh. i don't know why they decided to make it an age thing instead of who has the antibodies but a german research team was like let's see if adults with sma have these antibodies and like how many they have uh-huh. you know how this would work in adults is it even possible so they analyzed blood samples from 69 adults with sma type 2 and 3 in germany and the average age of these patients was mid 30s uh, most of the type 3 patients could walk and none of the type two patients could walk. That was just like their, you know, description, little description of their, of their group. So you perfect. Me. You in Germany. How many AAV antibodies do I have? Well, let's talk about it. I'm going to just read. Most of this is like, these are quotes from the SMA news today article by Marissa Wexler, because she did a good job and I don't feel like 
Shout out know. Marissa Wetzler yeah. for making this uh, digestible. Yeah, exactly. She, she phrased it all very nicely. How many antibodies do you have? <laughs> Are you asking Marissa? Marissa. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't know. Well. Among all <laughs> patients, only three had elevated levels of anti-AAV9 antibodies. Oh. That is 4%, 4.3% wow. to be specific. Does that mean like the, they were the only ones that this wouldn't work for? Is well, you mean? They are the, so for the purposes of the study, they defined elevated antibody levels as a tighter, higher than one in 50, I guess. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's like one colon five zero. This one is a study. 50? One to five. I don't know. 1.5. That's definitely not what it is. It's definitely one in 50. Uh, and researchers called this a conservative approach. Uh, this level is used as an exclusion criteria in clinical trials. So they were like, this will be good. But it, they said that the higher anti-AAV9 titers didn't appear to affect therapy's effectiveness in animal studies. So they're not even sure if a titer greater than 1 in 50 would affect the efficacy. They were like, this is just the level we're using, but it, it, we're not even sure if like if you were at 3 or 1 in – what's bigger than 1 in 50? I don't know. It yeah. doesn't matter. 1 in 25. <laughs> I have no idea what – what this is it's the math of this is the it's not making sense to me but if yours was double this it's unclear if that would even yeah, be yeah. an issue they don't know so they're saying of their group only four percent yeah seem to have levels that would antibodies even be... that might yeah make the treatment not work exactly there are other 60 96 no 60 percent. how many did i say three you said four percent three people yeah so the other 66 we're good to go. Have low levels of antibodies. Yeah. Or low enough. Low enough. So I probably have a pretty low number of antibodies that would make Zolgentamon not work for me. Yeah. The data suggested that there's no association between age and the level of antibodies that you would have. All right. Get me on Zolgentamon. There's more. The researchers noted that this is contrasted to other research in AAV types, like normally oh. the older you are, the more you have. So it's not like the scientists were just like, you know, <laughs> making a horrible mistake. Like it seems like you should have higher antibodies with this kind of virus. And they were surprised that you didn't, you know, so it might be an SMA thing. Maybe. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say that. It might just be this specific virus. Okay. Don't know. Um, so they wrote, the researchers wrote, it is assumed that only a narrow time window for AAV-mediated gene transfer exists. However, our data suggests that this is not applicable to the use of recumbent AAV9 vectors in adult patients with SMA. So they were like, yeah, that normally makes sense, but in this case, it's actually not true. Interesting. Okay. And yes, I would like to formally apologize to our captioner, for oh, this video. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I will have Hannah send you what her I'm notes reading. Because <laughs> these words I don't even know how anyone would begin to spell them. Yeah. And I'm okay. probably saying a lot of them wrong, which is really gonna throw you right off course. <laughs> okay. Um so Novartis, the company behind Zolgensma, uh -huh. is actually doing a trial right now that I don't think you know about. I definitely don't. I know about almost zero <laughs> trials. It oh. is called Steer. Mm -hmm. And it is like testing the cattle. Yep, like the cattle. Why did they even have things like that? And it is testing the e efficacy of Zolgensma on kids between two and eighteen. Oh, they're doing it. They're testing. Yep, interesting. They're doing it. I'm older than eighteen, but yeah, but they're working their way up, and they have said like they don't want it to be an age, like they're interested in going. That's so interesting. I know. And you are the size. Of, of a teenager. Eight year old. So <laughs> maybe it'll be fine. And, you know, they said like they don't know how it's going to work. Right. You know, if it will, ha I don't think that it'll have the same effects as it has on a kid that has no atrophy. Yeah, I'm not going to like dead up and walk. Probably <laughs> not. But, you know, if it replaces that gene, Interesting. it's totally unclear what it would do. That would do to me, me. SMN1. <laughs> yeah. Which would allow me to, like, in my very rudimentary understanding, be capable of actually building muscle. Well, the thing is, it would it would help your motor neurons not die. Right. The thing is, you can't bring back dead motor neurons. Okay. So it would keep all of your motor neurons. But I can make the ones I have stronger. Yeah, like they wouldn't die. Yeah. And then, then maybe you could. <laughs> I don't know. Build muscle with the myostatin inhibitor. I don't know. This is all very interesting. I'm gonna be drinking a just horrible concoction. Yep. 
well, this is a one-time treatment, which is the other, like, even on their website, they were like, we know that in adults with SMA, a one-time treatment is very, Oh, that would be you know, so desirable. Very desirable, exactly. I don't mean to complain, but remembering to take an oral meditation yeah. daily is not in my wheelhouse. Well, you would probably continue on that also. Not my why strong not? suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they announced that trial back in 2021. So it's already been like a year and a half since they announced. Why did I not know this stuff? I know. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm anxiously awaiting their findings, and we're going to the Cure SMA conference in June, where they have researchers from all of these companies uh-huh. come and you know present. present. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully they'll have a presentation about this. I bet you there'll be an update on. I'm really curious. That trial. Yeah, that's so interesting. There probably was one at the one in June, and we just didn't go to that session. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah, just had that's no why idea. we don't know. Is that way? Everyone else is like, you were at the conference. They talked about this. I feel like a lot of people are like, how is this not like a top line priority for you guys? I know. Like, knowing about this stuff. But it just we're isn't. like, we slept. It was an 8 a.m. <laughs> session. We slept in. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know when it's available. <laughs> well, that's really fascinating. Yeah. There are two. Well, there's a brand new treatment on the horizon that yep. might be really useful. And an older treatment that might be made available for more people. Yeah, that would be so cool. I don't even want to call this a dumpster dive. Yeah. This is more positive well, than a dumpster no, dive. Well, no, dumpster dive has nothing to do with the material being negative. <laughs> I know. My dumpster dive about geese was not negative. It, it's just... This is a dumpster dive filled with syringes oh. and... Needles. Oral meditation. IVs. <laughs> <laughs> so Jensma and Albedentma. Uh-huh, and we learned some new things. What's the name of the medicine that Scholarock is making? Dalum? 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 How many times did I say it? Dimble. Epidogromab. Epidogromab. <laughs> I was dancing around it. No, it you was close. <laughs> All right, everyone. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with a fun little game of Would You Rather. I'm going to try... To make Hannah very uncomfortable. Oh, great. And we are back. We are now going to play one of our favorite games, Would You Rather. It's not one of our favorite games. When have we ever even played this? You don't like any games that I ever find. Well, you don't like any <laughs> game that I like. To no, play. I like it. I'm just saying it's not one of our fav- favorite games. That sounds like we play it most nights. I play <laughs> <laughs> with myself most nights. <laughs> Okay. Well, I haven't seen any of these. Did you make... Are you going to tell me which ones you made up? interesting ones, uh-huh. and then I made up two of my own. Okay. So hit hit me with them. We're going to begin with bathroom humor. Oh, Shane. Hannah, would you rather poop 15 times a day or have one mega poop once every two months, but it takes six hours to finish? Uh, every Every how many months? Every six months. Every six months. No, every two months. Every sorry. two months. Every two months. What is what? A who? six hour poop. Who would pick fifteen times a day? That's six hours right there. But it's like fast ones. I don't. We're not talking no. about the way you. I'm not go. running to the bathroom fifteen <sighs> times a day. I do that sometimes. It's only I'm not, like you know three or four more than. Argue you with me. <laughs> I am picking every two months. <laughs> okay. What are I you do picking? Agree. I agree. I think you can tear it out. Six hours every two months. I'm picking that for you because I'm not putting you on the toilet 15 times a day <laughs> forever <laughs> for your choice. <laughs> every Set two months timer. sounds way better. Set a timer for 10 minutes. I would actually prefer that. I'll watch a couple movies. Wow. And then yeah, I don't have to little, poop for the rest of the two months. Every two month bathroom ritual. That's amazing. It's to be fun. We should do it together. I'll do it in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, move on. We might need to for a six hour one. <laughs> All right. The rest are not as raunchy. Great. Would you rather be surrounded by people who brag all the time or by people who complain all the time? Oh, geez. I thought this was interesting because both groups are equally infuriating to me, at least. Yeah. Is the complaining gloomy or in jest? I don't know. That's important. It's just complaining. It's genuine. You have to assume it's Ugh. genuine. If they're joking around, that's just like... Yeah, like I complain a lot, but us. not in like a, <laughs> oh, man. No, these are like... genuine complainers. Uh, they're oh. not happy and they're letting you know it <laughs> oh, no. all the time. Oh, no. Oh, I don't like my meal that I ordered. 
Uh, I guess bragging. Bragging? I guess bragging. Wow. I don't, it's going to be awful either way. I feel like the bragger you can kind of ignore. Exactly. And, or like kind of have a, a little laugh about. It won't affect my mood head. as much yeah. as someone who's just gloomy. Complainers bring me down. I can't deal with them. Yeah. All right, next one. Would you rather speak every language fluently mm-hmm. or play every instrument perfectly? Ho, ho, ho. Instrument. Really? Why? Because I don't like to talk to people. <laughs> I thought about. I I thought I was gonna choose language, and then I was like, hold on a second. Like, I don't you know what I? You know what I don't like to do? My language. <laughs> I don't even like to talk to people in English. I I don't think I would want to. T- I mean, it, it, that is really cool, but I think I would rather do the instrument one. That's interesting. See, my brain went right to like the value of each. I was like, okay, if I could speak every language. Oh, like a job. I would be able to be. The most sought after interpreter in the world. I just don't want to interpret. I can leverage that for big money. Or if I could play every instrument, I'd be the best musician on earth. I just thought that I could sit here and play my instruments and I would find a lot of joy. (laughs) I would sit in my bedroom and play the YouTube. I could finally play the piano. (laughs) I'm like, I would sell out every giant venue doing my act of like guitar followed by, you know. The violin. So, what do you followed pick? Followed by piano. What do you pick? Uh, I think instruments, because I like music a lot. Yeah. Did you answer the last one? You you also are picking. Uh, oh, people that brag. Yeah, okay. yeah. Although, I think I would avoid both groups. That's yeah. Well, wow, that's not. No, you can't choose that. Would you rather never be able to wear clothing, so you're naked from now on, <laughs> or always have itchy allergy eyes? <gasps> Like bad, let's assume. Shame. <laughs> that is evil. You didn't make that up? Someone else no, made that up? I, I did not make that Whoever up. Whoever made that up is evil. <laughs> I get such itchy eyes from allergies. Well, you also but I can't eye. wear clothes? You also have chronic pink So eye. like I can't go anywhere? I. You do not have clothes. Whether you want to go somewhere or not. Okay, I guess I picked the itchy eyes. Wow. I know I'm not staying inside the rest of my life. But you should still live in like a, a nudist commune. I'm not doing, I don't want to do that. You'd rather have itchy eyes every day? All day. I guess. I think I'd rather be naked and I would just stay home and Well you're covered. What do you mean? The way you sit, your butt is covered. You could be naked uh, right now and nothing would be showing. <laughs> well you're right. in that chair. You'd might can you put a towel over you? <laughs> I assume you cannot You can't cover undo the, the nakedness with other items. You'd rather be naked and never go to a restaurant again. I could not like deal with my eyes or jail. It's the worst. Well, thing. I would have to divorce you if you were <laughs> naked all the time and wouldn't leave the home. You would not go out and get me supplies and stuff. And well, if me. you're doing naked, then I'm gonna do naked. Like I'm not this choosing itchy fun. eyes, so this I is can. This now a fun situation. I'm not choosing <laughs> itchy eyes, so I can go live my life for just you to like choose being naked and staying home. Because then that defeats both the purpose. Naked all the time. We could just go out in public and we can't. the power of both of us, people would be like, oh. I guess we're moving to like, a nudist colony. <laughs> Fun or France, you know, there's bugs like they don't live in nice places. Shane, most people that are doing a nudist colony like to live in nature. Well, like you said, my rear end is protected, so I'm fine. How are you gonna charge your wheelchair? They've e- electricity nudist yeah, colonies. I hope so. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not camping. My idea of nudist colonies is that they camp. Maybe uh, that's yeah, not true. I feel like that's a, a movie thing. Maybe it is. I also feel like nudist colonies. Or a movie film. That's true. Are they real? I'm sure there's some. It's probably not as prevalent as we think. I bet you there's one in Utah. If Utah. there's one anywhere, it's in Utah. What? I just have a feeling. Utah is one of the more religious and conservative states. I know that, but there's also weird, weird stuff happens in Utah. Mm-hmm. I, I guarantee. Mm-hmm. If you're in a nudist holiday in Utah. I think Colorado. It might be cold, though. Oh, you'd freeze. Okay. <laughs> Now I'm the ones that I made up. Okay. To really stump you. <laughs> Hannah, would you rather always tip incorrectly far below <gasps> the appropriate amount or arrive at every important obligation one hour late? Shane. <laughs> the tipping and I just wouldn't go to restaurants. <laughs> I No, but that's too easy. Like, let's assume it's the type of thing where like, you're not aware of it. It just happens every time. Far below. Both of these you just avoid. But let's say it happens. Yeah. 
Well, I can't be one hour late to every obligation. I know. Imagine that's not a thing. Engagement. That's just you miss everything. <laughs> that's not like you're not one hour late. You just miss every obligation in your life. <laughs> so I guess I choose the tipping one. Wow. You would do that to people? I, I don't want to. <laughs> that's awful. That's rude. You I'm hoping that? I'm at like 18%. No, I said far below. Shame. You're, it's like you're way under tipping. Like we get valet for a car and you give the guy like 10 cents. Shame. And you have to just do it. Oh. <laughs> oh you have to look him in the eye and hand him 10 cents. Well, I don't, I or don't you're know. An hour this late. is awful. Or you're an hour late <laughs> to pick up your car. <laughs> All right. I miss every doctor's appointment. Uh huh. No, you don't miss them. You're no one late. is giving me my... That's just a, no doctor is like, come on in, even though you're an hour late. You're going to have to figure out how to contact them and let them know. I can just reschedule to an hour later? Well, no, you're late. So you're Shame. calling on the way there. <laughs> say, hey, I'm going to be an hour Then late. I guess I choose the tipping one. That is awful. That's rude of you. Last Shame, one. which one would you choose? Uh, I'm not playing this game. Next one. Would you rather <laughs> make $25 million right now but never earn another penny, no investing. Okay. It's just that amount of money, and you better spend it wisely. Okay. Or be guaranteed $100,000 a year for the rest of your life. It would not add up to $25 million. Don't try to do the math. Yeah, so I'm <sighs> doing the $25 million. But you can make more. Like, you can invest it. I don't invest. You're just guaranteed. You invest. This I'll take the twenty five million. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. But you would spend it. No, I wouldn't. You would accidentally spend it. Do, what is wrong with you? No, I, I would right. not. I'm not a spender. I'm a saver. You're not a spender? Yes. I'm not a spender. I'm actually very frugal, Shane. I think you'd be like, Oh, I have twenty five million dollars. Nope. I'm gonna buy a beach house and a jet. Nope. Oh, are you kidding? A jet? You uh -huh. know how much money a jet costs? No. A I lot, because I've looked into it. <laughs> it's out of budget for my twenty-five million. I'm not doing that. I would put the other one. I would buy a nice. I mean, I I would stay. It doesn't matter. I would have a nice home, and I would be good. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. I am hands down picking that option. I don't need the hundred thousand a year doled out to me. I can handle my money. Thank you. <laughs> Which one would you choose? I would do the hundred thousand a year, and I would. Just learn to budget and... No, you wouldn't. Yes, no, I you would. wouldn't. You would take the $25 million. No, I would yes, invest it. No, Shane. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Come on. That's I would a grow, dumb choice. I would grow that 100000 a year. What if you only live for two more years? Through savvy business moves. Shane never thinks ahead. And uh, I, this is exactly thinking ahead. Then you get $200,000. I got $25 million. We both die. If I die in two years, We yeah. both die in five years if in a I horrible live car to be crash. If I live and I now own half of... North America, because I've turned Lovey, that hundred thousand a year. A year isn't gonna. Yes, it you're is. never making you, any more money. Only a hundred thousand a year. When you invest, like Shame, I do. you're only making a hundred thousand a year. <laughs> no, you're guaranteed that you can make more. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. But if one year I make ten million, oh. <laughs> I win. The end. That is actually absurd. I'm taking the twenty-five million. I don't care what you say. And I'm right. So who do you think won? Wait, but answer the tipping one. Oh, tipping or an hour one? late? Uh, I did not see him being late. I so know. I would do the tipping and I would just... So rude of you. Live with the shame. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Awful. I would be known amongst our restaurant circuit as the we bad can never, tipper. No, we could never go to the same place twice. I know, it would be sad. But <laughs> I'm not going to be late. Wow. <laughs> All right, everyone. That is Junkyard Mayhem. How did it feel? Good. You made it through. Yep. I didn't even cough. You don't cough once. I think I'm getting better. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Every week I'm like, I'm getting a little better. <laughs> It'll be August. I'm almost better. <laughs> All right, everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast, uh, what should you do? Follow us. Shane. Subscribe. Comment. We really need to get better at the ending. This is not Meet fun. Up at the ending. No one wants to listen to Say that. Say a nice ending. If you enjoyed this podcast, everyone, please like, review, subscribe, all of the things you can do to support us. We really appreciate it. And it's a junkyard out there. <laughs> now now do your half. Oh, I thought you were I thought you were doing it. I was handing it off to you. Remember, it's a junkyard. No, I did that part. It's a junkyard out there. Watch out for the wait. <laughs> 
Give Watch me- out for all the IV needles scattered around. Watch our- out for that AAV9 yeah. uh, virus because if you develop too many antibodies, <laughs> you may forever be unable to receive gene therapy, gene therapy for SMA. All right, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>